American Airlines 77 struck wedge three of a ring and killed 189 people. Hi guys, and welcome back to the Storm and Cellar. Have you ever wondered what it'd be like to work inside the Pentagon, or uh, as it's affectionately known by military folks, as the five-sided puzzle palace? Well, I had two tours there, one in, on the uh, Joint Chiefs of Staff and the other at the Office of Secretary of Defense. First, let me tell you a little about how incredible the Pentagon really is. It was built in Arlington, Virginia in the 1940s during World War II and is the largest office building in the world with over 6.6 .6 million square feet, one and a half miles of quarters, all of which I have walked, by the way, and it sits on 243 acres. Imagine this. It was designed in just three days and built in 16 months. It takes an average of five to six months just to build a normal house. I believe this is a testament to the old ingenuity of America that we once had. Also, talk about one busy dude. Major Leslie Groves, who is part of the construction effort on the Pentagon, was also on the team of the Manhattan Project building, of, uh, building the atomic bomb in Oak Ridge, Tennessee. He was doing all this simultaneously. Talk about multitasking. The Pentagon was built for less than $63 million or $900 million in today's costs. That's about half the cost of a B-2 bomber. Now, you have to move pretty quickly in the building because people have places to go and people to see. Therefore, it has 131 stairways, 19 escalators, and 70 elevators. Parking's provided for over 8,700 cars and 16 parking lots for its 26,000 military and civilians who work there. However, you have an opportunity to choose whether you drive and receive a parking pass. I hated the traffic and the, my blood pressure went up the first week, so I opted for the second. I received Metro credits and utilized the Metro Transit system uh, to get back and forth from work. Now, I lived in Alexandria, Virginia, and caught the metro at the Franconia Springfield Station. It was exactly 30 minutes to the Pentagon. It was a great time to catch up on reading, and I was the first one on in the morning. Not so much in the afternoon. It was standing room only. Because of the shortage of steel during World War II, the Pentagon is only five stories tall, and it's made up of five rings, A through E, all concentric. And F and G is in the basement. Now, navigating the Pentagon can be pretty difficult unless you know the code. For example, 3 Bravo 125. 3 is third floor. Bravo is B ring. First, the 1 is first corridor. And room 25. Actually, it's not that difficult at all. Since 9-11, the Pentagon has greatly ramped up security, even for those who work there. So there are tours, but they're very restrictive. So I suggest if you want a tour, you visit the Pentagon's website because it's ever-changing. So I'm not going to go into much detail of the tragic day of September 11th, 2001, when American Airlines 77 struck Wedge 3 of A-Ring and killed 189 people. But it's worth noting that where that airplane landed was going to be my next office when I arrived at the Pentagon after they did reconstruction uh, on, on the building. And my second assignment was just down the hall. I don't know if this was fate or what. Suffice it to say, it was very expensive to repair the damage. The renovation cost after 9-11 was over $5 billion and was completed in about a year. They also, in the meantime, went ahead and renovated the entire Pentagon. Uh, while they were at it. Fortunately, the Pentagon, to the Pentagon's credit, uh, they recognized the sacrifice and heroism of that day, and they built a beautiful memorial just outside of Wedge 3 in honor of those who died. Now, there was another ground zero during the Cold War for a lone Russian ICBM, intercontinental ballistic missile, that was targeting a hot dog stand in the center courtyard of the Pentagon, where I ate numerous times. <laughs> Because I was serving and intercepting Soviet bear bombers during that time of the Cold War, I used to sit out there and eat my hot dog and ponder just how many occasions uh, there were 
uh, during the Cold War that we came close to annihilation. Well, speaking of eating, due to the difficulty and time constraints to leave the Pentagon to grab something to eat and get back, they, there are five different food courts located throughout the building to take care of that problem. And also, there are really nice dining halls as well. Actually, the Pentagon is a self-contained city within itself. It has shopping, uh, cleaners, military clothing, barbers, as well as all the eating places I just mentioned. Another very interesting place is the Hall of Heroes, where photographs of 3,460 recipients of the Medal of Honor are placed. Now, many folks choose this room for promotions and retirements. I was lucky to have it uh, when I was promoted to colonel and very fortunate to have my entire prior chain of command there at uh, my ceremony. Uh, they were also stationed at the Pentagon. All of the services to include the Office of Secretary of Defense and Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff are pretty much located on their own floors. The Secretary of Defense is located on the first floor, the Chairman on the second floor, Army on the third, Navy and Marine Corps on the fourth, and Air Force, and I have to believe Space Force because they fall under the Department of the Air Force now, is on the fifth floor. Of course, they all have an entourage of deputies under and assistant secretaries as well. So they're scattered along, along that same front uh, part of the building. In fact, <clears throat> the secretary and all the chiefs, they're all on the front part of the building, uh, their respective floors. Each of their staff then fill the rest of B through E rings uh, in their different staff positions. All the organizations have pretty much the same nomenclatures for their directorates. Although some services have combined a couple of them, usually there is uh, one through nine. For example, I'll use just the Joint Staff and Air Force. The, the first six are pretty much the same in each service and, and the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Uh, joint Staff and, and, uh, and the uh, Air Staff. Uh, J1 and A1, Manpower and Personnel. J2 and A2, Intelligence. J3 and A3, Operations. J4 and A4, Logistics. J5 and A5 strategic plans and policy, and J6 and A6 communications. And like I say, there's also 7, 8, and 9 on some of the services. Now, the, the Army is called G, uh, their directorates, and the Navy is N, the Marines is M, and I have to believe that space is uh, S. As I said before, there's also a 7, 8, and 9, which can be uh, different in each service. Remember, the Pentagon is the brain center for not only each service and how they uh, develop plans and policy, but also uh, joint planning between the services. In other words, how we will fight together as a team in the military. There are staffers from various services, and, and they have an inordinate amount of staff work to do, both in, uh, within each branch and other services. This entails a lot of coordination. In the olden days, you had to do your staff paper and then literally run it from office to office throughout the Pentagon. When I was there, it was totally automating, and that was sweet. I was very fortunate, and I don't mind admitting it now, but my staff jobs at the Pentagon were pretty much eight to five jobs, with the exceptions. Uh, one exception being a lot of business trips or temporary duty, TDYs. I remember uh, one old buddy whom I passed uh, in one of the quarters at 1700 or 5 o'clock. I was on my way home and I asked how life was in the, on the air staff. His head hung low. He said, it sucks. I'll be here all night. Well, you win some and you lose some, right? But in all honesty, these staff guys, they put in a lot of hours, especially during wartime. Okay. I'll leave it there for now. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Please follow my channel. Uh, let me know what you think on the comments section below. And until next time, make sure your takeoff and landings equal.